Okay, I guess everybody's super tired, so I'm only going to do like maybe 10 minutes. It's a really short uh, talk. Uh, I'm probably, it's a little bit too focused for the developer background, uh, but we're going to talk about this thing called React VR. And uh, before I even I get into React VR, first I want you to know that in Armenia we have uh, companies that are pursuing uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. And the big ones I want to name, there's like Arlupa, there's Tripoli, uh, Ronin uh, is a framework. So, but I really like React, so that's, that's kind of my focus. And let's start. And if you have a question, just ask the question right away. Uh, so just so we're on the same page, uh, there's this awesome JavaScript library called React. Uh, React lets you create UI. And originally it was created for the web, meaning like web browsers. Uh, but it has been abstracted and it's such a great idea that it has broken free of the web browser and now you can make uh, applications for uh, mobile using React Native and uh, it, it, it really lets you build a UI in a way that hasn't really been allowed before. And like I said, we have this amazing thing called React Native. Uh, so uh, some people have heard of this company, Oculus. Oculus was this awesome company. It's still a company. And Oculus is run by probably one of the uh, greatest living programmers alive right now, John Carmack. And if John Carmack works at a company, you know it's going to be an amazing place. And Oculus was bought by Facebook. This was a big deal. And they were bought by Facebook, and so Facebook has been dumping billions of dollars into um, virtual reality. You might have seen the recent conference. They had like these, uh, what was it? Zuckerberg was like talking to little like animations of people for, for meetings. So it was pretty natural that, that Facebook took Oculus and exposed it with React because to make VR, uh, it's, a lot of it's a lot of math, it's a lot of matrix stuff. It's not easy. Uh, but because we have already this UI layer called React, it's great that Facebook has now taken this well-known kind of thing and added that kind of layer of abstraction on top of virtual reality. And actually, React VR is closer to React Native uh, than it is to React in the web browser. The reason for that is because a lot of the abstractions for React VR, they require more performance, right? If you are, so to have good performance, to have a good user experience, you need to have 60 frames per second. As soon as someone notices some, uh, 60, less than 60 frames per second, people start to get upset. And this actually means people stop using your product and you lose, you just lose money. And it's, it's a direct correlation between how fast your product is and how much money you're making. Basically, each frame, you have about 100 milliseconds. If your frame takes longer, if, if, if you are doing more than 100 milliseconds of logic in a frame, you're losing money. And so React Native actually changes a little bit of the model of React to be closer to high performance. And that's kind of why it was logical that React VR was built on top of React Native. Uh, this is another reason why in the classes that I teach and to the people that I talk to, I really emphasize that React Native is an amazing technology that you really should be investing time in. Because as React VR gets bigger and bigger, um, your opportunities will only get better and better. But what is React VR then? React VR is built on top of 3.js. Okay? Uh, 3.js was this JavaScript library which is built on top of WebGL. And then WebGL is itself built on top of OpenGL. So like all software, it's an onion. Right? And the higher and higher we are, Hopefully, better the, abstra uh, better the abstractions are. There's always leaky abstractions, but uh, I feel like React VR does a pretty good job. So some people might, just to make sure that people know what kind of things they will need to do to get into this, uh, well, if you've never done React B before, you're not, you're not going to have a fun time with React VR. It's not going to be a fun time. Uh, you should know JavaScript pretty well. That's kind of ambiguous. 
but um, you shouldn't have any kinds of problems with execution context. You should know about prototypes. Um, you should even probably know about iterators now, generator functions, these kind of fun things, async await, this grab bag of words. Uh, because React VR is built on top of React Native, emphasize coming from that React Native background again, it will help you. And not going to lie, usually programming doesn't really require a lot of math, but because this is graphics and 3D and transformations, a little bit of linear algebra, at least dealing with matrices, will help you. It's not necessary. You can pick it up, uh, but it will help you. So I like code. Uh, this is what, sorry, it's not syntax highlighted. Uh, but this is basically what it looks like, how we make React VR models or 3D things. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that there's this dot object and dot MTL. This comes from Blender. So Blender is like this program that 3D models and 3D makers make. Um, they export an object and an MTL file, and then you can use it directly in your application. At the moment, these are the ones that are supported. Later on, you can get your own uh, as they add more support. And you can see what does this, this is modern JavaScript, and what we're doing is that this file creates a ES6 module, and then it is exporting basically a singleton that pattern deconstructs on the object, and then gives back a view. View actually comes from React Native. Uh, the same thing comes from React Native. You'll also notice that you will, we do import React from React. That's not the DOM model. The DOM is on the web browser. So the core React library is actually still kept separate, which is why it's great to know React. Right, because the core ideas of React, the lifecycle methods, component did mount, all that junk is the same across React on mobile, React VR, and React on the web. So you learn this one library super well, and the same core principles apply everywhere. And there's a little bit of that kind of math that I was telling you about. Um, I guess this is a little bit small to see. But what I really, but this is using Mobix, which is a state library. What I really want to emphasize here is that because everything is implemented at the JavaScript level, all your favorite JavaScript libraries, they still work. Assuming they don't, they don't well, because it's even running in the browser, they probably will work even better. Um, but the point is that the state libraries and all of the things that you like, I prefer Mobix, but some of you might use Redux, um, they all work out of the box. So you can keep all that kind of JavaScript knowledge that you have, and it will work just fine. For example, if, what if we want to make like a 3D date, right? You could still use date functions or, God forbid, moment.js. So that all works out of the box. And what's happening here is that we're basically finding out when something was clicked. We want to react on it. Uh, we want to change things. Um, so then just closing up with this. Uh, to be honest with you, there's lots of problems with it. This is like alpha quality software. Probably should not be building production quality things with it at the moment. Most, I mean, it depends on how strong your programmers are, talking to the people who have companies. If your programmers are comfortable with keeping up with stuff that changes every week, great. If your programmers are like Angular 1 or jQuery people, it might be a little bit hard to keep up with this technology because this literally changes week to week. And the documentation, a lot of it is just copy pasted from React Native. So it's not fully there yet to build a business, um, but it will get there. So that's thanks. Um, just a little bit, we have this like simple, simple thing that's running in the browser, right? So you can see that this is kind of like a 3JS thing, if you're familiar with that, right? But we have click handlers, and it reloads from the local server. When we click on stuff, it's able to handle. Um, it's a stupid example, but the point is to show you. I've never seen this before. Uh, it was supposed to be a Death Star. But the point is to show you that this kind of thing, this would be, uh, there's the Death Star. It's 3D in the sense of you're able to move around in it. Uh, but once we have 
like the, the Gear VR and the Oculus things, these things become actually 3D in the, tr in, in the sense of like you can move inside of it, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, the web browser itself has started, the web browsers themselves, and you can see I'm using Safari, which usually has the crappiest support for most things. So if Safari is able to do it, uh, the other browsers are well equipped as well. So as the APIs have become sufficiently decent to where a library like React VR can be built on top. We even have some TIE fighters. So the library is definitely coming along and these kinds of things will get better and better, but definitely in terms of like a, oh awesome. In terms of a huge opportunity, you know, when a technology has just been released, not a lot of people know about it, which means it's a lot of effort to keep up with it. But as a comparative advantage for Armenia, like the earlier you get in on something new, the comparative advantage that you build up for yourself. Right? So then you will get this expertise that other people really don't have at the moment. Um, we can go, I can go ahead. If Rob, do you want to show it a little bit more of the code? But while Rob is showing, I'll take questions. Okay. So hello everyone. I'm Robert, and I will like just talk about the code that make that thing working. Okay. So there are actually um, more of like auto-generated files. Let's just show the repo. Okay. Sorry. Right, just no, no, no. Just stick with the. I I want to show the GitHub repo. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, you want to? Yeah, you can show okay. It okay, so let's see what files are there. Uh, the main part of files are auto-generated when you create a new project in React VR. The main files we will look. The main file we will we will look are index VRJS and one created in here. this store.js file. In store.js file, we have the all variables that are changed during the program. And in, in index VRJS, we have the all the logic. So let's take a look. So this is store.js file. In this file, we have the, as I said, the variables. And we use also, let me show. <laughs> no, I just want to call it. OK. So in this file, we use Mobix uh, for uh, changing the stuff while the program working. The main data we will have here is the uh, pictures you say you saw, first, second, and third, uh, the dead star, the robot, and the other planet, and the position of patterns uh, in which you can tap and change the photo. And we have current position. Uh, the first picture was the first planet. And also, there is loaded panel thing, which is for uh, JavaScript async stuff, so we know that panel was loaded. What well, is panel? We'll t look in the, in the next file. Which file? Index VRJS. Okay, so here goes the main logic. Uh, if you did some uh, React Native stuff, you will probably, uh, you are probably know what that uh, second import is. App registry, text view, uh, uh, all this stuff are also in React Native and React VR uh, kind of forked that stuff. The new things are Peno, Asset, and VR button. These things uh, uh, create the main look of the program. So Peno is, uh, as you can see, can you scroll down a little bit? Uh, a little bit more. Ha hold on. OK, you see the Peno. The Peno is the thing that makes the uh, panoramic uh, view of the VR. So here you load the picture and it creates the VR look for you. And also it, uh, we have the function, so when we know when it's loaded. And we use that loaded panel, so we know that it's loaded to render this text on the screen. And also we scroll up a little bit. And also we have some VR buttons to move, uh, uh, move inside the program. And also, that locations, the mat matrices we uh, showed in the store, are used to locate the patterns on the screen. 
So maybe show the program once again. Okay, so this is the panel, this panoramic view of the picture, and these are the buttons, as you can see, and cr uh, clicking on them will take us to the next picture. Buttons are located. And also, we can see it in uh, Gear VR if you want. Can you, like, say the IP address so I can open it there? Oh, my, my computer's IP address. Yep. That's my IP. Okay. Hold it. Go click here and, and try it out. I said really? we can try later. <laughs> I, 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 I just I just want to open it for now because I didn't know the IP address. <coughs> How was the IP address in here? How are you going to type? One hundred, one hundred, one hundred dot one hundred dot two seven dot seven. One hundred, one hundred dot two seven dot seven. Okay. Are you having a good time? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just opening it. <laughs> How can we show this on the screen? You can. Yeah. <laughs> I think people want to try. So He's having a lot right? of fun. So you can also get one of these. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not having fun right now. Man, work. I know. The screen is here. What oh. to do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the future, by the way. <laughs> anyway, any questions about React VR or React or anything like that? What gyroscope? The general model in React is that you will get, like, let's say, events or handles on something when, some, when, when you get things happen. So for example, when the panorama, which is like the main abstraction, when the panorama loaded, that event object, when the pan panorama loaded, we get all kinds of data from the panorama. So you get that information. So you don't have to grab like a global variable. That would break the model. You don't, you don't have to grab that global variable. The React framework itself gives it to you. The reason why you don't want to grab the, okay. What's awesome about this is that you can take this, let's say you're working for a client, right? You're working for a client, you don't want to be interacting with their JavaScript libraries because of any kind of mutation. With React VR, you can take your whole application, put it into one JavaScript file, and then you put that as a source for an iframe. So you can dump your little 3D thing inside of any existing application as an iframe. And that's why you don't have to grab global variables. It's given to you. That is what he has done, yes. And then when you move your head, yeah. you should tell uh, your application that the, the coordinates are changed so that it will show different view, right? Yeah. So it it's already done that in that VR. Right, in the but that's just going to be like an on, on event move or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a regular callback. That depends on the props that are given of the object. The view will have those kinds of things. Like for example, like there's analogous things for, like on click doesn't really make sense. What the hell is he gonna click? 
but uh, the view itself will have extra new props that are going to be specialized for VR. It's definitely there. The end. Are you can like try to say the full object, okay? Uh, like slash something to open. If you have the VR device, you can go to this address okay, and then slash VR. Slash VR? Yeah. Okay. You can try it here, I guess. I think. Hope it works as well. Yeah, slash VR. Mm, uh, go. Are you sure it's your IP address? I think so, man. Hey, dude. This is really cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But it's not working, though. Yeah, I know. So, what is there to try? <laughs> Something that I think it's a problem.